Today we'll make this rustic joy wreath. Keep watching. So here are our supplies, but there's going to be a couple of other things we're going to need. We're going to need some floral wire, some of these woodcuts, either stickers or the trim around the stickers, some berries, you can get those picks from Dollar Tree, I just pulled mine apart, you can get pine cones or pine cone picks, and then some greenery of your choice. I've decided not to use frosted theme this time, we're going to use just evergreen. This is a 10 inch hoop wreath. It's an embroidery wreath. It's the inside ring. Those woodcuts came from the wedding section of Hobby Lobby and I got those 50% off. I am going to use the outside of these stickers as a stencil. So the stickers were gone. I'm going to use the stencils. I'm going to use Gorilla Glue to hold those blocks to the frame because they're quite heavy and I don't want them to to fall off. In the scheme of things they're not heavy but you know if you want it to stick to the side of something it's a good idea to use a heavy duty adhesive. So I think the Gorilla Glue should do the trick. Most of these pieces have a flatter surface somewhere so you just want to try to put the flattest side to the side of your hoop and then have your edges touching just using these clamps from the Dollar Tree to hold those in place while they stick. Use just a tad of glue in between and clean up any mess that might spill over. Once they've dried you can remove the clamps and go on to using your stickers or your stencils. All you have to do is cut them to fit the size of the circle that you're using, the round that you're using, and then peel them off. I found that using my fingernail to press on the inside picks those up easier. If I didn't mention before, the stickers actually came from the Dollar Tree. So I'm going to put the center of my O on first and then try to put that outside back in the original position. The surface of the wood is rough. You can sand it if you would like. If not, when you put these down, be sure you take your fingernail or something and, and kind of press these into place so that they don't come up when you're filling them in. I started off with an acrylic marker and the wood is so porous it just really soaks it up and I wasn't getting the coverage that I wanted. As you can see that here. Maybe a few coats of that might have done the trick, but seemed kind of like a time waster. I started on the O and then gave up. So good old chalk paint to the rescue. I'm taking a stiff, flat little brush and just starting to put the paint down on the sticker outlines. You don't want to use too much paint and since I've never done this method before, I was scared it was going to have a lot of bleed through. So aim for the center of your circle, or I mean your letters there, um, and don't push underneath the edges of the the paper there. Don't don't get under the edges of it, or it will bleed through. I tried to stay sort of toward the center, and then use some up and down motions to get around the edges. It has seemed to do the trick pretty well. My Y was coming up a little bit, so you'll see me hold that down. So I didn't get as clean of an edge as I wanted to, but I'll show you in a minute how I fix that. I used two coats of paint on this, and then when they were dry, I just carefully peeled them up. The J turned out perfect. I had a little bit of a trouble um, removing the O from the center, and I scratched the paint a little bit. It was dry, but I scratched it. And I had to get my tweezers to pull that off, but I used an emery board later to kind of file that and get that off of there. And then on the Y, my edge on the right side was a little crooked or a little sloppy. So in a minute, I'm going to fix that with a 
chalk pen. The greenery is going to be on one side of the wreath and the joy is on the other side. So we're just going to find placement for that and then start wiring your layers down. Put this wire on carefully so you don't poke your finger and then just be sure that you you get it tight enough that it will hold it there but having just enough slack in it and at least a few of the loops that you can use it as a holder to place your other picks in if that makes sense. You'll see in a moment. So I'm putting on one more layer. You could just use one if you like. I'm bending up these pine cones so they're not sticking straight out. They kind of bend forward. And I'm slipping those through the wire. That's what I mean by leaving just a little bit of slack in it. And that'll help hold that in place. Now I've chosen four berry picks. You can use whatever you like. And just begin eyeballing where you want those to go and then using a little hot glue to put them in place. You might want to aim for the plastic part of the pick rather than the the little berries themselves because they can melt and then that's just a mess. And I am aware that some of these berries are scratched and have white on the outside. That can be fixed. If it bothers you when you get them, you know, you can fix that with a red marker pretty easily. Doesn't really bother me. Now we're cutting off the wire because we got everything we need over there as far as florals. And I'm going to tidy up the edge of this Y. It is, of course, not perfect, and I'm not aiming for perfection. I just want to make it a little bit neater. I'm going to make a bow to go in the center of our floral side. And I've decided that this Dollar General and this Dollar Tree ribbon are the perfect match. So I am making what I will call the Olivia bow because I learned how to make this on Olivia Olivia's romantic home. You take several loops, I use six inches, fold them over and then take little notches on the sides. I'm going to do that twice, once for the polka dot ribbon and once for the vintage red truck ribbon. I'm just measuring against the little tape measure I have on the edge of my table. Going to make my loops. Just counting. You can do a simpler bow if you like for your, you know, your wreath. Anything really can go there, any type that you like. Or you can go without and put a poinsettia or something in the middle if, if that's what you like. I'm going to take this zip tie. Put it around, make sure that it is in the notches. Then I pinch my wires together to give it some shape. And then tighten up that plastic. And once the zip tie is tight, you can start moving around your bow. You want to pull out and at an angle so that it kind of pops it out of alignment and it makes each little piece stand out on its own. Sometimes when I have an idea in my head, it does not come out my mouth the same way, but I think you can see what I'm doing here. So it's a cute little bow. I like it. We're going to trim off the back. And there we are. So you can take a little bit of floor wire and just place it through the back and then twist it around to hold it in place. And I will be trimming that up later. Fluffing my bow again. There's something quite satisfying about fluffing bows to me. I like it. I, I, it's one of my favorite part of making a wreath is fooling around with that bow to get it the perfect little shape that I like. 
and a bow really does give a nice touch. So I've decided that my joy looked a little sad, a little joyless on the side, and I'm going to add some red berries over there to pep it up just a bit. I've just cut another piece of the pick into little strips, and you know, if you've seen my videos, you know, I always like to do a dry run is what I call it. Put it in there, see how it's going to look before I actually glue it down when I can't move it. So there we go, have my little berries on there. And I'm going to make a burlap string, a burlap cord hanger. It's really easy. You can see what I did there. And then you slip the end through the loop and pull it. Slide it over. You're going to have to hold that up to see where the weight pulls the, the wreath because you're, you may have more floral on one side that makes it heavier on one side or the wood pieces may be the heaviest part. So you want to make sure that you put it where it's going to hang correctly. And if it for some reason slides, which jute usually doesn't, um, you can put a little piece of hot glue there, a little dot, and it will hold it in place. So I'm going to take a few strips of the truck ribbon and of the polka dot ribbon to just make a couple of little extra bits and pieces to give it a little extra something. And I'm going to make a very simple little, you could almost call this a bow, I, guess. I assume that you could call it a bow or you could just call it, I don't know, a piece, a dovetail, an end, a tail, maybe. And I'm just going to tie that and then I'm going to tie it around the frame right above the J. And I like that. Of all the inspiration pieces I've seen, I have not seen one quite like this. And I decided to use the word joy because you hear me talk about joy and, and finding what brings you joy and happiness. And it's a word that I really believe in. I think it has a big impact. So I'm just going to put this in place with a dot or two of glue so it doesn't slide. Then you can bend that or have it lay straight depending on what you like since there's wire in it that makes it quite easy to do. I'm going to make a couple more tails and I will be cut off in a minute so you can't see how I complete it but I'm just going to stick those underneath the pine cones one on the bottom and then there will be one also on the top. I don't know what happened to the end of that piece of footage. Thanks for coming back and for watching my videos. I'm having a lot of fun with these and I'm seeing that there is a lot of demand for woodland themed and rustic Christmas which makes me very happy because it is right up my alley. So I will be doing more of that. If you're new here, I hope you subscribe and stick around be, be part of our YouTube family. And thank you for those of you who have stuck by me all this time. I'll see you again soon.